everyone. Welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel. It is, what day is it? It is episode 160 and it is uh, July 19th, 2020. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. It is such a pleasure um, to be here. I hope everybody's doing really well. We've got Zan in the live chat and Sabella, Kelly, Maggie, uh, Tracy, Tammy, Becca, thank you so much, you guys, for being here. It's so good to see you guys. Um, I hope the weather is lovely wherever you are. It's beautiful here. We're just um, kind of having a sleepy Sunday morning, and um, I know many people miss the Sunday morning live streams because they've got church and family commitments and whatnot, and in August, uh, towards the end of August, beginning of September, we will be moving the live stream to Saturday morning, so I hope that that will work for people. It's so good to see everybody. We've got a lot of people in the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I worked yesterday. We had, it was a very, very quiet day. We had six empty beds in our ICU. We, I work in the second biggest ICU in uh, the greater Vancouver area in southwestern British Columbia in Canada. And um, yeah, it was <laughs> six empty beds is unheard of. <laughs> and uh, But there were some traumas rolling in, which is pretty typical for a um, summer weekend. So uh, it was ramping up when I was leaving and I was happy to hightail it out of there so that I could be here with you guys today. So I hope that everybody is doing really well. Um, we've got the ongoing yarn substitution content going in our greater community. Um, we started out in May and then we had some June and July content and August will sort of wrap it all up and finish it all up with one big movie of all of the vlogs sort of pasted together and a downloadable PDF um, for, those, uh, for some of those um, at higher tiers on Patreon. Um, to download with some sort of formulas and tools for you guys. And of course, I'm always available to answer questions and to help everybody out. So we've got some first timers in the live chat. Welcome, you guys. It's good to see you here. Hi, Glenda and Rochelle. I'm just glancing. It's you guys, it, the chat moves quite quickly, so it's hard sometimes to keep up. Megan's in the chat. Amber, it's good to see you guys. Um, breed and color studies went live on July 15th. I have put a link in the show notes and actually I'll put it in the live chat right now. If you missed out on ordering and you would like to participate, that is the wrong link, um, and you would like to participate, please um, use the link that I'm putting in the live chat right now um, and you can use the ordering link to hop on over to Katrina's shop. Um, we The um, inspiration for this study was for was from Greta's photo actually um, the photo that just flashed up and um, it was just beautiful um, of the flowers on the uh, countertop and then Katrina made bat a bat out of the inspiration from um, the colors in the photo and then there's also a kit so this is the kit here and you can do whatever you want with the colors so um, basically breed and color studies we do it every six months so it runs for six months of the year and then we do another study for the last six months of the year so this one's running from July to the end of December and then we'll start up again in January and run till the end of June so the first half of the year is spent looking at comb top and some sort of a breed and the second half of the year is looking at carded prep and some sort of a breed. So this time around we're going to be studying Char Rollet and which is a French breed originally and um, it's got kind of an interesting history because it was brought over um, and sort of refined and changed a little bit. It is a very 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 short staple. Um, in the Fleece and Fiber source book there's not really a whole lot on it. It's sort of one page. It's very short. Um, short fibers traditionally have been spun um, from a carded prep and have traditionally are spun long draw um, and this uh, fiber spins very very nicely long draw um, it really drafts beautifully you can double draft it where you're drafting out long draw and then you kind of untwist it a little bit with your hands and draw it out and um, yeah it's just a really really lovely uh, prep I've already spun half of my bat so I'm working on the second half and that content I will be sharing with you in September and October so look forward to that if you're part of the how I spin content on patreon.com slash well for pearls so thank you Greta for the photo I don't know if she's here today um, I don't see her but thank you to to Greta for the uh, 
um, for the inspiration because uh, Katrina came back to me and was like, I think this is the photo. And I was like, absolutely. So um, yeah, it's really great. So thank you so much. So that's Breed and Color Studies. And uh, it's so good to uh, be able to be up and running again with that. And it'll be really fun to share people's projects on the show. We actually have somebody in the community who um, finished up her graffiti and I've got a breed and color study from before to share with you because um, we haven't done a breed and color study share from the community for a while and it's exciting to be able to do that today. Okay. Yes, it is beautifully spun long draw. <laughs> it is a really, really beautiful spin. So, oh, thank you, Kaylee. The lighting is amazing today. Okay. So you know why? <laughs> it's because the sun is streaming in. Um, we've got a beautiful clear day outside. And so for whatever reason, I've just got a beautiful, uh, beautiful light on us today. Um, let's see you guys. I'm just catching up with, um, with chat hot and humid in Wisconsin thinking about the way I will spin oh awesome so you guys are all thinking about ideas for spinning hi Diane it's good to see you guys actually bound off a shawl in my dorset oh awesome Zan I can't wait to see that so that was the dorset study that we did last summer we did um it was dorset horn um carded roll legs um then that was last summer um was our carded study so um that'd be really fun to see that yeah it is warm in parts. Yeah, it looks like it's warm in Canada today. I think so. Let's see what the temperature is today. Oh, it's only 18 degrees Celsius right now. I think it's going to get up um, to like 25 or 27. We don't get really, really super hot um, weather here. Um, we'll usually, yeah, high of 26 today. We get um, in, in sort of in BC, um, in, in British Columbia, we, we sort of average out, we'll get like a week or two of like really hot weather well, where we'll hit 30, 32. Um, and then the rest of the year, we're sort of more moderate. So we'll sit sort of between anywhere between 8 and 16 most of the year, which is a big range, but it's sort of like in the middle. It's, you know, jeans and t-shirts, jeans and sweatshirts, rain jackets. Um, and then of course up north is a bit different. Um, for July, I want you guys to tell us about your most challenging yarn that you've ever spun. Um, the episode thread is here. I will paste it in the live chat for you. And uh, if you could tell us about your most challenging yarn. Um, we've got a little bit more announcements. We've just I just wanted to mention Book Club. Um, they met on Friday. I tried my hardest to be there and I just could not do it. Um, we're doing Persuasion by Jane Austen right now and I'm sure uh, Becca will say in the chat what the chapters are that you need to spin, that you need to read, that you need to spin, that you need to read uh, for um, keeping up with, with Persuasion. Um, and then... We're also doing How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi, and we will be getting together on Wednesday, July 22nd to discuss that. And unfortunately, I'm working, um, so I will miss that first discussion, but um, I will see you guys in the next one. So without further ado, let's get into the show. So Becca said that we are finishing um, we are finishing the book for the 31st of July, which is great. So uh, yeah. So I wanted to talk about Tour de Fleece because it is finishing up today. Today is the last day of spinning for Tour de Fleece. And we've had so many people in the community share yarns and share all of the things that they've been making. They've shared bobbin photos, spindle photos, um, electric spinners, um, you name it, people have been spinning on it. And um, there's been a ton of yarn finished both on the Slack channel and in Ravelry. It's just been awesome. I have not been able to keep up. I'm so sorry life. <laughs> what can I say? So Trudy says her progress over the last week or so, she applied the purple, the pinkish purple yarn she spun during Tour de Fleece in 2018 with a lace weight cashmere. Hang on, let me just mute my, my, uh, my end. Hang on, because you guys can hear the beeping. Um, with lace weight cashmere and she will be done 
this will be her first skein of yarn that she can actually use in a project. She also spun some hobbledehoy nests. Uh, Rebecca, Rebby J, she is in stage 11 and without fail, I am always surprised by how long plying takes. I got two plied today and each one took me over an hour. She can wait until tomorrow for the third skein. She's very pleased with her squishy alpaca merino. Painted Turtle from a follow-up. This is her yarn here, actually. Um, it's just, this is, this is Rebecca's yarn that's flashing through right now. I always forget it's backwards for me on the camera. Um, this is her two skeins. And then this is all of the stuff that um, uh, Trudy was spinning. Painted Turtle says another yarn done 165 grams and 732 meters pre-wash. We'll go into the wash now with the first one. Glad I have the bulky bobbin to ply big skeins and would be nice to have a big ball winder. I guess I need to do it by hand once she's ready to knit. So this is all of that yarn. This photo here, amazing. 732 meters pre-wash, unbelievable. And Crystal, oh, and this is one of her other big skeins that she did, and that's Painted Needle, unbelievable. You guys have just done amazing, like churning out the amount of yarn for Tour de Fleece that you have. I always love Tour de Fleece because it's such a great opportunity for us. Um, you know, you scroll through Instagram and everything's there and like all of a sudden there's just tons and tons and tons of yarn and tons of spinning and people pull out their wheels for it and it's just such a great um, event. So this is Crystal's yarn. Um, oh man, I'm so behind. I swear I've been spinning. She finished plying her Three Waters Farm alpaca blend. It's about to take a bath and next up she's going to do some combo spinning which may or may not turn out to be a giant disaster. I hope not, Crystal. And then Dana, T28 girl says, and I don't know if Dana's in the chat today. Um, I'm still, I've still been working on my sweater spin, but I washed, combed, and spun up some sample skeins of the CVM fleeces that she received from Gaylene. I'll talk about that in a sec. I did a Navajo ply or chain ply. These, um, her skeins are coming up. They've come, they've gone through the slideshow a couple of times, but will most likely do a traditional three ply. The white has a crunchy feel and the gray is very soft. So hers is coming up in just a sec, her little samples. Um, I think it's the next, it's after this one, after Crystal's. So this is Crystal's Three Waters Farm. I love the colors in this. I saw it on the, on Ravelry and I just thought, oh, I just love those colors. And then these are her samples. So the yellow, the white one she said is a little bit crunchy, but the gray, the gray one, a little bit brown, brownie gray is quite soft and they're just beautifully spun, Dana, just gorgeous. Um, Gaylene had a whole bunch of CVM fleeces. Um, they were moving. And so a whole bunch of us contacted her and got fleeces from her. So my, me and my friend Greta, who's local here, her and I actually um, sent them, sent our two fleeces down to Kingdom Fleece and Fiber Works um, in Vermont to our friend Liz. And she's actually pin drafted them for us so that, and they're actually being shipped up. I was hoping they would be here on Friday so I could share them with you, but um, they weren't quite here yet. So hopefully this week and I'll be able to share them with you next week on the show. But really well done with 51, with um, 51 yarns, with uh, Tour de Fleece, you guys. It's been an awesome, awesome um, tour. Now, I have made a finished yarns, um, finished spins, finished yarns thread for you guys to share. Um, if you could please keep it chatter free. It's on Ravelry and um, I've linked it in the live chat. So if you guys could just um, share your photos of just your finished yarns and your finished spins. Um, and just keep it chatter free. We can chat in the Tour de Fleece thread on um, on Ravelry and in the Slack channel, but if you could just keep it chatter free in uh, Ravelry, that would be great. And you could just scroll through and see everybody's finished yarns. That would be amazing. So let's go to uh, 51 Yarns Group A. So our 51 yarns spin along. I cannot believe it, you guys, but we are actually nearing the end. Um, it is July now, and um, we've got a couple of really big months coming up. So we've got August and September are really big months. Um, they're big spins. There's uh, pet fiber in there. So that encompasses like dog fiber, angora, um, any of those fibers that are sort of considered, you know, friendly pets, if you will, rather than like fiber animals. Um, like um, I sort of think of it as like farming versus household. And um, we've got bast fibers coming up, cotton, 
um, manufactured. We've got some a couple of really big months to, to work through. And then we've got um, spinning outside of the box. So we've got emotional yarns coming up and um, spinning things that you wouldn't normally spin. And then December will wrap us up and we'll be done our epic two year long spin along. So group A has been working on this since January of 2019, if you can believe it. And they're gonna be wrapping up in December, like I said. And then group B, they just started in January. And if you think you can catch up with sort of five or six months of spinning, please don't hesitate to jump into group B. Um, there are tiers on Patreon for group B. You just have to scroll through the tiers and look for group B. Um, they are gonna be working through their spin along until the end of December of 2022. So they've got a year and a half to go, but group A is almost done, which is just unbelievable. So this um, spin along is based on the book by J.C. Boggs Faulkner, 51 yarns to cast, to, to spin before you cast off. So this is J.C.'s book. You can get it through the Ply Magazine website. Um, Ply Publishing is the, the book that is the company that put it out. So if you're familiar with Ply Magazine, you'll know um, what I'm talking about. What a lot of people did for their um, spin along is they actually took their book and they took it into um, a store that does this and they actually cut off the binding um, and they hole punched it with spiral um, uh, to spiral bind it and then laminated the front cover and the back cover. And now it's a, a spiral bound book that can lay flat, which I think is awesome. Um, so a lot of people have done that to their books. Um, so if, if you're looking for an idea of how to sort of use the book in a more in a more meaningful way for you, because in the book, there's places on each page to keep records and to put in your um, samples. And so I know a lot of people wanted to actually put their samples physically in the book. So if you're thinking about doing something like that, think about getting it spiral bound. So these are Megan's yarns. So um, she did silk and luxury. So one of her, um, this is her um, silk yarn here, this one here. Um, this is an ugly yarn on purpose because it was meant only for sampling. When I spun, I have spun many different silk blends. I've spun lots of silk noil for tweed. I have blended a silk hanky with other fibers, and, but I've never spun my own blend, my own 100% Tussa silk yarn. When I got a new, when I get a new fiber that I've never used, I do this type of sample and I spin some thick, I spin some thin. I tried all different sizes. I knew I wanted lots of twist for silk, so I didn't change ratios, but I do that with other fibers. I spun some with air and some with smoothing. I spun some more moderately high twist and some with with much more twist. I spun some um, with so much twist that it broke. Basically, I tried all different things and my fingers learned a ton about the feel of silk. I applied this together uh, just to see how the two ply feels, but without any consistency in matching up my sizes. It's just purely an experimental yarn and I learned a very smooth, fine worsted yarn gives a ton of drape. However, I am intrigued by a thicker, puffier yarn, especially for some texture and weaving. I may try this in the future, given that I can buy smooth, worsted spun silk yarns very easily. I also learned that because silk is so smooth, my fingers don't really give me a lot of feedback about twist. That is so true. Uh, when I spin wool, I rely on the feel in my fingers to know when my twist is consistent. But with the silk, I found my fingers couldn't really tell how much twist was in the fiber. And I had to rely on watching how many fibers I pulled out with counting how many treadles and drafting a certain distance to get a consistent yarn. Not a yarn to just relax with if you want something really smooth and consistent, but very beautiful. And then Megan also shared with us her luxury fibers um, and that these are the knit swatches that she did. Luxury fibers are such a large topic. I have spun camel and yak. I have knit with bison and angora. Each one is an experience in and of itself. I had never spun cashmere and late last year I found the garage sale of a century and ha uh, happened upon a large outdoor garbage bag full of cashmere, mostly from here in Colorado for $80. Amazing. Uh, Megan is from uh, Colorado. Um, it is a 
at least a sweater quantity, maybe two. It is de-haired and soft and lovely. There is a DK brown, light brown, and white. I carded it into Rolex with my 120 um, times per inch hand cards and tried a couple of samples. I've been debating about what to make with this fiber, a sweater, a shawl, so I decided to trial spinning it two ways to see how I liked it. So the things that she learned, I have never been very good at hand carding Rolex, so after a garbage bag full, I should be better. And number two, when they say cashmere leads needs a lot of twist, man, do they mean it. I had to use my highest ratios, absolutely. Other than high twist, I didn't find it too that hard to spin, but I would have as a beginning spinner. But if you are an intermediate spinner, I would say go for it. Judith McKenzie says to really rough up your cashmere, fold the yarn in hot water with agitation and again with a finished cloth. I did this and agree that for cashmere, this is a good idea. It brings out a soft and lovely halo. Um, I think cashmere has so much potential and it needs a lot of twist and it likes to be spun very, very fine. So this is um, a really great example of where um, the intuitive spinner um, sort of paying attention to the fiber really sort of comes through that that is in fact sort of how this fiber really um, wants to be spun. I really fold the brown sample and a ton since if it is going to be a sweater yarn, I wanted to see how it would wear. I also found, I also wore it around in my jeans pocket for several days or threw it in my purse. It so far has stood up just fine. Very cool. And number five, the most amazing thing to me about cashmere is how light the fiber is for the amount of warmth and product that you get. It's like wearing air. It's lovely stuff and I'm excited to work more on this. Very cool, Megan. I think that's just fantastic. And making a, a fingering weight sweater or a lace weight sweater out of cashmere, I mean, that would just be amazing. Incredible. So group B, um, they've been sharing their medium wools and their tail spinning. So Jennifer shared um, now her and now my medium, a Romney that she processed and dyed. And she just loves the sheen that Romney gives. So that was that ready, uh, ready corally pink yarn. Um, I'm just checking chat, make sure I didn't miss anything. And Tessa shares, hi team B, I elected to skip over the last challenge. Um, I've played with that stuff before and will again, but I'm all for tail, but I'm back for tail spinning. Um, I can't remember what it was that we were doing that she skipped over. It might've been the double coated wools maybe. Um, Rachel's Patreon video on it is clear and easy to follow and I stocked up on a bundle of locks from Sarah Elizabeth's Fiberworks at Knit City last fall in prep for this particular 51 yarn spin. So she dug them out today to play with. She doesn't usually deliberately make art yarn but this was a fun experience and she looks forward to trying the other tail spinning options out there. So hers is this one here I think. This was Tessa's yarn. And then this is Jennifer's, because Jennifer jumped on that as well. Tessa, it looks delightful, but everyone, I find this a tedious spin. Rachel, you are right about making it, taking an hour to make the yarn. I did one run with Wensleydale Cross, lovely long locks, but the butt end is not particularly felted, so it was hard to make and keep a deep hole. And my spacing between locks was longer than I would have liked, given the length of the lock. So when I used another fleece, which I had dyed and set aside for some craft work, again, it is a Wensley cross, can't remember exactly, but it is two inches at best. And she has some other locks in there as well. Again, keeping the butt end together to make her hold a hole is challenging, but I get the concept. And for a limited batch for a particular project, she can see the value. Tail spinning is really challenging and it takes a lot of practice. And the other thing is that you really need to have... Um, a setup where the locks can file onto your wheel um, in a way that they don't catch. So having a yarn guide versus hooks works really well. Um, a bulky flyer works really well. And you want to be able to sort of put those yarns onto the bobbin um, without causing a lot more, not damage, but they, can, they get caught on everything because if you're tail spinning where you've got the butt end, if you guys can hang on a sec, I can actually grab my tail spun yarn.
I keep it close because I because I love it so. So this is my tail spun yarn. And um, when all of these locks catch, they catch in the flyer. Um, and they catch on the hooks and they catch sort of everywhere. So um, if you can grab that hole in the butt and really twist it in there and, and the underlying yarn becomes quite tightly twisted, um, you can have a, have a really great um, experience and you can get sort of a bit of a, um, you can get a rhythm going. Like you can actually make quite a bit of yarn, but it does take a long time. And this was two sets of Wensleydale locks, um, two sort of batches, if you will. She ties them up and, and puts them in and um, ties them with ribbon and it's sort of two batches. And the thing, these are from Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks and actually her shop is linked in the show notes with uh, the Group B 51 Yarns um, stuff in the show notes and uh, which is linked below. So, uh, and you can also go to patreon.com slash Welford Pearls. Um, the, um, the, the thing is, is that for this amount of yarn and, and $65 Canadian um, of locks, when you see these yarns listed on places like Etsy and they're, you know, $150 or $180, um, I think having made them as a community and having sort of created these yarns, you start to really appreciate why they cost what they cost um, when you're buying hand spun, um, tail spun yarn. Hand spun, tail spun yarn. <laughs> Sounds like pizza, pizza. So yeah, really a lot of fun. And I'm glad you guys um, tried it because that's really what it's all about. Actually, my tail spun yarn has always, since I made it um, a year ago, it's always kind of been like a necklace, if you will, for my dress form. But it got relegated up to some hooks on the back of our door because... Um, I've had shawls and sweaters and whatnot that I've been working on for the last six months or so. And um, my my Diana doll lost her, her necklace. <laughs> um, Sarah Elizabeth, um, Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks, um, that's Sarah. She's been on Wool and Spinning Radio. I've, I've um, had her on the show before. Um, if you missed that episode, it was it's just so much fun to listen to. Sarah's just this enigmatic personality, lots of charisma. She's so lovely. And um, she wears hers as a necklace at all the fiber shows so whenever you see her at um like knit city and fibers west and stuff which are local festivals to me um she's always wearing her tail spun yarn although the last couple of times she hasn't been but usually she's wearing it and it's really a lot of fun so i wanted to share one more thing from the community and this is from our made with love along so this is actually wrapping up at the end of july so um, July 31st is our cast off date. It went from, it ran from April 1st until July 31st. Um, this is a time to do what we do best and get creative. This is a time to make and lift up others. Rebecca's uh, blog post about this make along is linked below and it was an opportunity to work with um, Katrina's um, fibers and yarns and to uh, lift up those in our local community um, and those who wanted to do something local for their local makers, um, it was an opportunity for you to do that as well. So um, Tamar shared this just this morning um, and in the middle there is her graffiti, which was our last breeding color study. So that was our organic uh, pole worth that we had done and she did the um, Zandig shawl. And I think this is a, is this a, um, Justine, what's her last name? It's stunning, this shawl. <laughs> um, so this is fresh from the blocking mat and I am in love. This is my Zandig made from, made with love along. It's made with Crafty Jacks through the darkness. So that's the black yarn there in the tough and tender base. And my graffiti hand spun as the stripes. I just had to share my excitement. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Tamar, it's amazing. So she shared this this morning, first thing in the Slack channel. And uh, I had to download it and pop it into the show. So this wasn't planned. It's just amazing. And then what a great shawl. If, I, I, I feel like it's Justine Lorkowska. Is that how you say her last name? I can't remember. I'm actually drawing a bit of a blank. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's by... Uh, Justina, that's what it is. I knew it wasn't Justine. It's Justina Lorkowska. So um, let me 
link the pattern in the live chat. I just linked it for you guys so that you can see it. Just amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so um, really well done, Tamar. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to share um, so that I could pop it in. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's saying how beautiful it is. Yeah. Yeah, Jennifer. Oh, she's so cute. Hi, everyone. I overslept. Oh, those are my locks. <laughs> yes, they are. It's your yarn. Um, it's awesome. I have some wool. I might blend with it. Okay, you guys are chit-chatting about uh, fiber prep and whatnot. So that's just wonderful. Um, oh, and you're talking about llama and alpaca. That's great. You can get memory by blending with wool. Yep. Oh, and you guys are talking about the properties. That's great. Awesome. I love it when you guys do that. Um, okay, so I'm going to move the cameras around just a little bit and um, move over to the webcam. I feel like the camcorder is not as clear as I would like it to be today. For some reason, it's not as crisp. I'm not sure why that is. I'm just going to turn the mic so hopefully there isn't too much feedback. guys. <laughs> ah! Now I'm over here. It's really fun being able to move around a little bit and being able to do this. Um, I find that um, more often than not, if I stay over here where the where the table is, um, it, it just is, it's too, um, it's too cluttered. There's too much stuff that I need to have set up, like with the monitor and the keyboard the mouse, the speakers, like it's just too much. Um, so if I can move around a little bit, it really makes a huge, huge difference. So um, yeah, so let's talk about this stuff. So um, I, the mitts we'll talk about in just a sec. Um, this is a really fun little spin that I did. Um, hopefully the camera will pick it up really nicely. That's actually not too bad. Um, this is a 50-50 Raimi um, Romney blend that I did. So this was some fiber that I got from, um, our sheep to shawl that our guild did last year. Let's see if I can hold it there for you. And, um, it's been in my stash for a while. And so I split it in half and I did, um, this first blend that's 50, 50 Ramey, um, Romney. And then I have another, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to make a, um, I think it's like 15%, 85% uh, Romney Ramey, just to see the difference. So this I actually spun when I was on the phone with my brother the other night. We were having a, a big chat about some stuff coming up in the fall. And I was spinning away and uh, I just really love how it turned out. Now the thing about it that's a little bit um, interesting, that's quite interesting actually, I'll zoom the camera in for you is that um, it, it's very Raimi-ish. So there's very little elasticity, very little memory. So even with all of that Romney in there, even though it's 50% Romney, it really spun up um, like Raimi. It feels very Raimi-ish. Um, there's, no, there's no bounce. However, the drape is really amazing. Like you can see, um, um, I know it's hard because you can't feel it, but you can see how like there's just this really lovely sort of drape to it and heathering to it. And um, it has just a really nice feel to it. It, it. it doesn't feel like wool per se, but it doesn't feel like a plant-based fiber per se. I think somebody feeling this who didn't know what was in it would sort of be a bit flummoxed. Um, they would maybe think that it was blended with um, nylon or they maybe even would say silk. Um, it's just got a really interesting feel to it. And of course, with the white Raimi in there, it's blended, um, it's got that lovely heathering now. And actually, one of the things that I was quite concerned about was how, um, um, 
because the Raimi is is white, um, I was quite concerned that with the gray Romney that it would really come out stark and and wouldn't give a warm heathered effect. But that's actually not what not what's happened at all. It's quite consistent. It's quite even. I'm going to knit up a swatch out of this just to see what it's like. And um, it's just been a really fun sample to make. I just have been sampling and playing around. Um, Megan actually did a um, sweater that was, a I think it was BFL, Megan. It was BFL and Raimi. And she had done several different samples with it. And so it kind of sparked my interest. And when I found this in my stash, I've just been going through my stash recently and kind of airing it out a little bit. And trying to find some stuff that's smaller quantities of fiber that's more like two ounces, three ounces. I did that CVM recently. Just trying to spin through some of these smaller amounts of fiber that I had either bought or been given that was meant for sampling that I never got to. So this was just a really fun spin. I did it on my Magicraft. I just spun through it um, one evening. It took me about an hour. Um, I spun it continuous backwards. So... I think I did four counts, wind one on. So draft back, draft back, draft back, draft back, and then on to the wheel. Uh, medium twist, medium ply. Um, I just wanted a, a really nice sample. Um, and that's definitely what I got. It does have kind of a squeaky feeling. That's a really good way of saying it, Diana. It's or Diane, it's almost like, um, yeah, a little bit squeaky. It's very Raimi-ish. So if you don't know what Raimi feels like um it, it's hard to describe but it it has that bast fiber feel to it it doesn't have any memory um but again like if you look here i can hold it up like the drape it's just got lovely drape i think this would actually be a really great yarn for a shawl to be honest i think this would be it would have the memory of the wool so when you blocked it it would stay put um but it would have the sheen from the Raimi and it was really nice to spin. I had carded it up to blend it and um, I have to say it was really nice to spin. It's got a nice halo. Um, it would make a really nice Shetland hap, I think actually. Yeah, and it would take the dye in a really interesting way because if you used acid dyes, only the Romney would dye. And if you used Procyon dyes for the plant-based fiber, only the Raimi would dye. So you would end up with a really interesting yarn. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of potential. So BFL Raimi, that's right, great combo. Yeah, okay, so I was right, Megan, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and your sweater was just fantastic. Um, this is after washing, and um, it came up, the halo came up um, a little bit more from prior, and it um, poofed up a little bit from the Romney. Romney's not a really, like, sproingy, poofy fiber by any stretch. It's a long wool. Um, it has a sheen as well, and um, it didn't, the yarn didn't, didn't bloom really, really a lot, but it did bloom a little bit and it, um, the, the, it resulted in a really nice medium, medium twist yarn. So, so that's what I'm actually expecting, Megan. So she says she did a 50, 50 and then a 30, 70, the 50, 50 felt more planty. That's definitely how I would describe this. And the 30, 70 felt more wooly. And she ended up going with the 30, 70 because it, because it still had a lot of drape. And her um, sweater that she made, Megan, if you want to go ahead and link your, your Ravelry project page in the live chat, go ahead because the sweater itself is just gorgeous. I think it was called the Maple Leaf, I feel like, something like that, Megan. So yeah, really a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying this kind of sampling that I've been doing recently. It's been really a lot of fun. And um, it's been for selfish reasons of just doing some smaller spins and doing some smaller stuff and spinning through my stash a little bit. I'm gonna zoom out the camera for this because it is so dark. Um, this is my Frisian and I started knitting it because um, I was getting bored of spinning. <laughs> I'll be totally honest. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Um, so I've got, I wound off a third skein this past week. So I've got three skeins ready to go. Um, this was the last one that I've just finished. And actually it's not a lot of yardage. I think it's only like 150 yards, this one. Um, I've got, there's vegetable matter in this yarn still from the fleece. So as I've been knitting, I've been pulling it out because some of it didn't come out in the spinning and some of it, most of it came out in the carding. Um, cause remember that carding is another way of cleaning our fleece and cleaning our wool. 
And you'll notice under your drum carter after you finish um, carting up something that you'll have a whole bunch of uh, debris underneath. So these were the original two and then this is the third one. What I've started knitting from is the original uh, sample skein that I did. So I wanted to sort of see how far that yardage would go because that was only about 80 yards of yarn. And um, these are my next three. So I'm going to um, figure out my yardage of these, figure out my grist, and then I will continue on with the knitting. So this is the shore cardigan. And I actually remembered today to bring the book. So this is a pattern out of Swoon, Maine by Carrie Bostick Hogue. And this was my knit swatch and it's very dark and I've showed it a lot on the podcast so um, I won't go into too much detail. But this is the shore cardigan here. So it's there and it's got the high low hem. Um, because it's in the book it's hard to share with you and actually the photos in the in the book itself are not great and the only reason why I bought this in the end was because I wanted to make about four patterns out of here because I don't normally buy books I'll just buy the patterns individually but I wanted to make about four different patterns out of here and I ended up making Nora the little lighthouse pullover I had done it I did it in in purple with only one color of yarn so I did the contrast was teal and um, she wore that and wore that and wore that. I think she's actually outgrown it. And then I made the shoreline vest, which I ended up pulling out and I'm gonna remake it. And then there's the shoreline, the shore cardigan. And I'll see if I can find the photo of it in here. Like I said, the photo of the shore cardigan is not great. It's all cut off. I hate it when they do this. It's all cut off so you can see the top and you can see the bottom but you can't see the whole thing so it's a high low hem um, so it's where at the front um, the front of the cardigan is a little bit higher than the back of the cardigan and there's uh, short rows across the back to make the back of the cardigan a bit longer and then at the top neck you cast on for the raglan and you cast on from here to here and then you build out the front of the cardigan so you're you're actually building out the short rows here instead of doing um, instead of actually working short rows across the yoke so sometimes what people do when they um, design um, top-down raglans or, or top-down sweaters in general um, they'll sometimes do you'll cast on all the stitches and then you'll work short rows to build up the back neck because your back neck is higher than your front neck by usually about two inches, depending on your body shape and your body size and how tall you are. Um, so this pattern, you actually build it down the front. Um, so you're casting on stitches and um, building it as you go. And now I'm actually, I just started the, um, I finished that part and I've just started building down the front. So I'm actually kind of building like the actual cardigan now. Um, but they, I have to say the yarn itself is, um, it is so downy and bouncy and sproingy. It is such a pleasure to knit that I had this little bit done in about uh, like a couple of hours. Um, I worked on it while James was at tutoring and he's usually at tutoring for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So on Tuesday and again on Thursday, I knit all of this and most of this. So I wasn't working on this for more than about an hour, an hour, and I got all of this done and it was just addictive. And because of the nature of the yarn, um, it just like knits itself. It just, it's just amazing. Um, so I'm really enjoying this and I'm gonna, um, I'll do the yardage up later and then I'll keep on going. This is gonna be a really, really fast knit. So I wanted to share that with you. I was burning out on spinning the fleece because it's just black. And it just, you know, you're spinning long draw. And yes, it's fast. I have two more bobbins uh, to ply. So I do have that to do. And um, I I will hopefully have a fourth skein. And then I'll wash that, do the yardage, like I said. And that should be enough for the cardigan because I'm already getting really great yardage. That's a lot of knitting for only about 80 grams, 80 yards of yarn. Like that's a lot of knitting. So that'll knit up really, really quickly. Um, I just want to check chat to make sure that um, 
I haven't missed anything. Um, oh, Maggie, that's amazing. She's plying a Romney that she combed from fleece. Oh, I, I, want, I can't wait to see that finished, Maggie. I love Romney. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's not that I get boards made at spinning a certain amount of fiber. After four ounces, I'm reaching my limit. Yeah, I hear you. These longer spins can be really a challenge. And if you're spinning um, you know, a fiber that says solid color or you know, not very interesting or like plain white, which I'll share with you in just a sec, it does get to be a bit of a slog. Um, and it, you know, I think that's where the community comes in because you can share with each other and we can bounce ideas off of each other and really um, lift each other up as we spin these long, these long spins. And one of the things that I've really enjoyed doing is working on these big spins when I have um, something else that I'm doing, chatting with friends, um, sitting in virtual spin group, um, whatever it is, because um, for me, it really, breaks it up, you know, and you can get through a lot of spinning and all of a sudden you've got a full bobbin and you didn't even realize. So yeah, I feel the down like breeds are so easy on the hands to knit. They are Becca and because my hands have been a bit sore recently from the uh, big sweaters that I've worked on, like the, um, it's just out of camera shot right now, but the anchors cardigan, that was a lot of purling and it's easy because it's such a fine yarn, but I do worry about the life of my hands. So I do sort of try to do what I can to save them. So it's been nice to work on something that's just really easy on the hands and easy on the eyes. So this is my Targi. Uh, it was a uh, part of a combo spin that I did. This is created by LCB. And I had done the combo spin. I really didn't like the combo spun yarn. I had woven a, sh a, a scarf actually out of the yarn, but the rest of the fiber that I had divided up and put in a bag to finish the combo spin was still sitting there several years later. So I went through the bag and as best as I could, I broke up the four colorways back into their own colorway. And this was the first one that I got spun. The other three are still waiting for me. This is what I mean about these like smaller spins that I just wanna spin through and, and be done so that I can make some smaller projects. So I really wanted to use this yarn and not just stash it because that's one of my other goals um, over the next few years is just to make some smaller projects and to to um, work with some of my yarns um, and not just make um, a ton of sweaters even though that's my favorite kind of knitting. So this is the um, the skein and it, it's not a full four ounces. I think what ended up being left over was um, about 60 to 70 grams ish. I'll weigh everything when I'm done. I didn't weigh it after. I should have weighed the skein before I started started knitting, but that's okay. So I, I came across this pattern. It's a relatively new pattern. It's by um, Amy Oden and it's called the uh, Crosswise Cadence Mitts. Um, and so you can see that there's that cross hatching pattern. And yesterday at work, I when I got to work, I was here on the mitt. So when I got to work, I was here. And by the end of work, <laughs> I was here. <laughs> so that's how yesterday went. Um, I never, ever pull out my knitting when I'm on the floor at work, ever. I work on my knitting in the back um, in our staff room, but I never work on it um, out on the floor. And if it's really quiet and there's nothing going on, I'll pull out my book um, or I'll pull out my Kindle but I never pull out my knitting. Anyways, that's how yesterday, how, how quiet it was. So I finished up the first mitt and that's the cross hatch pattern. It's really fun. Um, I was, you can see the underlying striping in the yarn, which I thought was really interesting. And I'll talk about that in just a sec, but that's the first one. And um, the nice thing is these are both exactly the same. So the two uh, mitts are exactly the same. So um, they'll, they can go, you don't have to have like a, a left and a right. So they just go back and forth by themselves. And actually one of the things I was worried about when I was making it, I made the medium. If I were to make these again, I think I would make the smaller one. And these are done on 2.75 needles. I'm just, I'm just using double points. I was gonna do magic loop and then I was like, ugh, I'll just pull out my DPNs. Um, one of the things that I was worried about when I was knitting them was that I, um, uh, was that they would stretch out and be a bit, a bit too big or that they would be a bit too small and then the stitches would stretch. Um, but I should have made the smaller ones cause, um, 
these these fit perfectly but if they stretch at all they're going to um they're going to be a little bit too big the other thing i was worried about was that this would be a little bit too that the space from the thumb gusset up to the cast off wouldn't be long enough but it ended up being perfect and i wanted a really long like i wanted this to be a bit longer so that it would really go under my rain jacket and that ended up being perfect as well and my rain jacket is actually the color of the yellow in these mitts so talk about a perfect pairing um in terms of the striping i was really surprised about the striping to be honest um, the reason for that is because the fiber had been in a bag mixed up with everything else and it was in quite short strips and I um, when I was spinning it um, when I was spinning the uh, the yarn um, after I'd separated it all out and everything um, I made sure that the um, like if the if the strip of fiber that I had because they were quite short like I said ended on blue I grabbed another one that started with blue and then if it ended on the yellow I made sure that I started yellow and you can see there's some well actually you probably can't because it's so fine there's some pinky coral in here and there's some other colors in here that I think were actually from other colorways so the fiber got like I, I divided it as best as I could but some of it I think got a bit mixed up and so it adds a little bit of interest, but there is a lot of barber pulling. There is a lot of striping and it does take away from the crosswise, that cross hatching pattern. On the other hand, they're really fun. They're going to be lovely to wear. They've been fun to knit. They're super fast and um, it's just a great opportunity to showcase some hand spun. And because of that striping, I'm surprised how many places in the in the plying that the yarn that the colors did actually match up. Um, I'm really surprised about that. I expected more of this, to be honest. I expected there would be more um, places where the yellow and the blue or the pink and the blue would ply up together, and that there would be that really harsh uh, barber pulling, but not so. So it's kind of neat to see how these yarns work up and how we. We never really know. So, yeah, we never say the Q word at work. That's so true, Jennifer. I know, right? When you're actually there, you're not allowed to say the Q word. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks, you guys. Yeah, it is really pretty. Thank you. The stitch shows the wool well. Yeah, yeah, I think it's both. I think the stitch actually does highlight the the wool nicely, and I think that the um, the the, the yarn also highlights it nicely. Um, I think a heathered yarn like this would have also created a really nice pair of mitts. Um, so, and that's the nice thing about samples like this that are a little bit bigger where you can actually do something with, with the yarns, which is really fun. My only other pair of fingerless mitts that I've ever made for myself were out of some Icelandic and actually it has pilled so badly because they were Icelandic singles. They were Spunky Eclectic Club and I probably, I was a newer spinner at the time and I probably just didn't put in enough twist and um, yeah, it ended up being a little bit, a little bit of a challenge because those mitts, I love them. I love the colors, but they ended up really, oh my goodness, the pilling is unbelievable. So the last thing I wanted to share with you was I started a spin again. I've been going through my stash trying to figure out what I've got. Um, this is not very interesting, so we won't talk about it for too, too long, but I've been stripping it down and, and um, making uh, little, little strips like this to spin. Just little bits like this. And um, the, so this is all kind of ready to go and ready to spin. Um, when I'm, when I'm spinning a, a longer project, I don't tend to actually make nests. I just lay it all on top of each other. Cause then I have to stop the spinning, untwist this and try to find the end, which I just find time consuming. So I have, um, half a pound of this and this is actually some Punta top. It's from Argentina and I had to look it up because I wasn't sure what it was. And I had got it um, from Shuttleworks in um, Calgary when they were shutting down and back in 2016. And uh, it says product of Argentina. So I had to look it up. And basically Punta is what they label Corriedale from South America. So um, it's just Corriedale. 
And actually what I, the reason why I pulled it out and decided to spin it up is because I loved that Cheviot spin so much that I did for my Gentle Morning that I decided to just kind of keep on going with something like that and have it running in the background um, so that I could really learn the nuances and the kind of all the finicky bits and all the lovely things about my Saxony. So it's on my Saxony and um, I will take some video this week, hopefully, um, of me spinning on it so that we can talk about it next week. Um, I've got it running in double drive. It's running really, really nicely. And um, I've just been spinning it up and I've got, I think I've got enough. So originally I was gonna do a two ply um, but now I'm thinking I might do a three ply, but we'll see. We'll see. Cause I'm not worried too, too much about how fine the singles are. So I may end up actually doing a two ply now that I'm thinking out loud. Um, and just kind of getting used to the, all of the nuances of the wheel, getting it running really nicely. We filed down the flyer to get that burr out of it. And I contacted um, the fiber garden and John got back to me immediately and was really great about it. And uh, he contacted Gord and Gord actually emailed me right away and said, can you send me a photo and let me know how it goes? Cause they don't want it to happen again. So that was really, really great. So I'm gonna send some photos to him later today and um, tell him that I think we fixed it cause it was running beautifully on Friday. So I'm gonna spin on it some more today and hopefully um, um, have a chance to spin some more of this up. It's just a boring white 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 fiber to spin. It's not very interesting, but um, I'll maybe ask Katrina if, if I can um, commission her to uh, dye the yarn when it's done. And if it's half a pound and I do it as a two ply, I might have enough for a sweater. So more sweaters, <laughs> always more sweaters. So we'll see. Yeah. So I'm going to come back to the main camera and we'll get ready to say goodbye because I think that's all I have to share with you today. The funny thing is that I actually have been spinning quite a lot, but um, I don't have um, a, some of it I can't share with you. So that's kind of a bummer. So I've been doing tons and tons, but I can't um, share it all. <laughs> so uh, I've been working on stuff in the background and then that's actually part of the reason why I started the mitts and why I started this cardigan because I had nothing that I was working on that was for me. And so um, I thought, you know, what can I do that are some stuff that, you know, I could, I could work on that, that I could share with you guys that I want to do, that I want to wear. So, and that, that stuff that I, if I don't love it when it's done, I could throw it into uh, the gift box for, for later in the year. Also, the Odyssey shawl, I mailed it off to my sister-in-law because I didn't want to wait until the August long weekend to give it to her because she's had a couple of really rough weeks and uh, she got it and she cried and um, she was really thankful for it. So I'm really glad that I sent it off to her in the end. I'm going to make, I'm actually going to make another one, um, but I'm, I'm going to make one for me because it was so much fun to make. And I need, the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn and I can't remember what the yardage is and whatnot, but I think what I'll do is I'll go through my stash and I'll see if I have anything that would maybe work and then spin from there. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. No, I don't want it to be over. I love it that you guys love the live stream so much. It is, it's a highlight of my week. Like I look forward to it all week. So uh, thank you so much to you guys for for being as, as enthusiastic as as, um, as you are, because I, I really appreciate that. I make a lot of mitts and basically think of them as needing the same properties as sock yarn. That's a great thought, Rebecca, because those Icelandic ones that I had made, they really pilled really badly. And it's that friction, like you say, Becca, the friction of the palm and between the thumb and the side of the hand is hard on the yarn. Yeah, and I, I don't know about you, but I find like, because I wear rain jackets all the time, um, the, the, um, the Velcro on the outside, like if that gets caught on the um, on the the mitt, or when you're zipping it up, if there's a Velcro overlay or anything, it, it all gets caught on the um, on the the mitts themselves. Oh, thank you, Sabella. She loved that shawl. Thank you. I I'm, I really want to make another one. Um, and it looks awesome on Katie. Actually, she sent me a photo, so I can send I can show it to you guys. Um, so this is Katie in the shawl. Oh, wait, 
this camera doesn't, um, I have to hold it back here because this camera doesn't, um, doesn't, um, it doesn't, um, fo autofocus. So that's her in the shawl. That's my sister-in-law. Yeah. Really awesome. So, yeah, it's killer on knits, Velcro on jackets. Absolutely. I have found that mohair blends can prevent pilling or at least minimize it. Good to know, Elizabeth. Velcro is not Will's friend. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the input about the llama. Oh, good, Sharon. You got some help with the llama wool, uh, the llama fiber. That's wonderful. Um, I try and buy raincoats without Velcro. You know what? It's funny, Wendy, because she said she tries to buy raincoats without Velcro for that same reason. So you know what? I actually... Um, my last one that I ended up getting um, only has a zipper. And the reason, it was partly the color because it was mustard yellow, um, but it was um, also because it had no Velcro on it. Because my, my other one has a lot of Velcro and my long one has Velcro because it's completely waterproof. Um, and I used to wear that one. I still have it, but I, I don't wear it as much, but I wore it walking the kids to and from preschool. And I wanted a really long raincoat with my um, galoshes so that I wouldn't be absolutely soaked by the time I got home. So, cause we would walk to preschool rain or shine. <laughs> so yeah. Okay guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for participating and for being a part of this community. I really appreciate it. If you are interested in joining us here and being a part of what we do here, please don't hesitate to go over to patreon.com slash pearls and just have a look around. Even if it's just a dollar a month to support the work here, you do get access to the audio podcast when you do that. And um, if you want to be part of the um, social community and join in on the Slack channel, um, you can look for that as well. So thank you everyone for being here. I I will see you guys on, um, is Friday a, I can't remember if Friday is a wool, is a, uh, a, a wool circle stream day. We have to change the name of the wool stream to something else because we keep getting picked up by, um, YouTube and they keep kicking us off saying that it's, um, um, you know, um, illicit content. Um, so there is a wool stream on Friday morning. It's actually James's birthday on Friday morning. Um, so I will see you guys while he's at school and then we'll have the live stream next week, same time, same place and queries and explorations is afterwards. So for those of you who are part of that, um, please make sure, uh, well, I will see you at, at 10 30 after, after the show. So until next time, happy spinning, happy knitting. Thank you so much for being here. And, uh, the, the wool stream on Friday, instead of being at seven 15, it's going to be at nine 20 Pacific daylight time. So I'm moving it forward because the kids are at school. So, um, we'll have the wool stream will be a little bit later for those who, um, are, are part of that. Have an awesome weekend. Have a great day. I hope you're just basking in sunlight and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.